So, for doing that practical thing uh, using jogged array, then let us see this here. I am adding one class. So, class name is what? Jogged array, I am just adding here. Jogged array here, right? Click on add, then here I am taking jogged array here. Let us take static void main, then let me create jogged array representing two square brackets. Array name is A equal to new int of array row size is 3, but column size I am just leaving columns later we have to decide. Then how do we initialize the columns? A is 0 equal to 0 row. In each row how many columns you want, to, how many elements you want to place, then new int of then first row I would like to place 4 elements, then 10, 20, 30, 40, these 4 elements I want to place. And second row, 1, new int of, then 3 elements I want to place here, 10, 20, 30. Then a of 2 equal to new int of, then 2 elements I want to place, that is 10 and 20, right. So after that let me print some statement, console dot right line elements of elements of jagged array or elements of jagged array or then here you can see this I am going to write some statement for loop for int or equal to 0 or equal to 0 or less than how many rows 3 rows or plus plus each time row will be increment then open bracket and one more for loop why because array within the array so something wrong int or equal 0 or less than 3 or plus plus it's clear right next i'm going to take int c equal to 0 c less than so it is jagged array yeah yeah it is jagged array that's what something wrong a dot length here then c equal to 0 c less than a of r dot a of r dot length and c plus plus c plus plus open delimiter close delimiter here so in c equal to 0 c less than a of r dot length c plus plus here now here i am writing what console dot write method a is array name of row inside row how, what are there columns are there that's what i am taking separate brackets for rows and columns then after that to print the elements in within line by line then we should use a statement called console.write line let's read the statement here console.read right so let's see here when i'm going to run this program but before running the program we should state the startup object startup object expand and jagged array now you can see this click on save here okay right now so 10 20 30 40 first row is having 10 20 30 40 elements and second row is having 10 20 30 and third row is having two elements 10 20 okay so as per our discussion i have placed that uh, first row uh, what it is two elements only let's do that A of 1, this is A of 2. Let us change something here. Right. Now let us see this here. Let us run the application and check out. You will be able to get here 10, 20, 30, 40, and 10, 20, and 10, 20, 30. What we have seen, same here, it is there. Okay. Right. So, how do we read the elements? You can keep the breakpoint here, and also you can keep the breakpoint here. Then, two breakpoints have given, and let us run the program. You can see this first, it is showing. A is array name int of 3 rows are there and columns are up to you here. A dot length is what it will return 3 number of rows are 3 only then R equal to 0 0 starts then let us press F11 then R equal to 0 0 less than A dot length is how much here A dot length is 3 no 0 less than 3 is how much so it is true then you can see this F11 and C equal to 0 then C less than 0 less than a of r a of 0 dot length 4 why because 0 row 4 elements are there a of 0 dot length is 4 now you can see this r equal to 0 c equal to 0 then you will be able to see this what element 
a of r rho 0 how many columns 0 column that is 10 value like that. So, it will be read keep on continuously c plus plus now you can see this a of r 0 c equal to 1 that is 20 value will be there 20 is also this there a of r c here. So, while uh, if we keep the break point for two for loops then you can able to get it here we can able to check out the values how it will be changed by pressing f 11 keep continuously ok. So, this is after reading that all elements it will go to r plus plus ok right as usual what I explained same thing will be happen you can press f 11 continuously you will be able to check out internally what is happening each and every line by line. So, if you keep the break point uh, if any where you mistaken you will be uh, know that clearly here ok right this is what jagged array with the for loop, but if you want to write that for each loop here you can see this when I am going to write the for each loop I will let us comment this. So, now for loop is not going to be work here these two all whatever I selected lines it will not work, but let us be add uh, some more code for jagged array, but we have already we have seen the code for jagged array the elements to display for loop. Now, let me take for each loop ok right. So, for each for each int square bracket r r is what row in a rows are available in a a element int square bracket is one array in this array r is there in a a is array name inside a rows are there then for each I am going to take one more int c c is a column columns are available in where rows. So, that is what c in r then open delimiter close delimiter to display that console dot right then tell me what we have to display here or or c c elements we have to display why because columns are present in rows rows we cannot display c is elements only I want to display to the user then c plus that is all ok right after that we can give that console dot right line for line by line statement then close it and run it. So, simple it will also will work out clearly jagged array with for each loop here it is very clear ok. So, why because here this statement is important here why because array within the array is called jagged array. So, that is what whenever we are giving here square bracket it contain internally one more array that is called rows are there here right now inside the rows columns are there that is what I have taken another variable called c ok right this is very simple logic for implementing jagged array with what loop for each loop here ok. So, far we talk about in array single dimensional array two dimensional array and jagged array here. So, next I am going to talk about here dynamic array. So, how do we change the array size at run time that is called dynamic array we can k we can say. So, already we talk about static array and dynamic array these two are under comes into according to nature of physical size that means either you can change the array size at run time or not change. If you are not change that array, array size at run time that array is called what static array but to change array size at run time size method that is called jagged array or uh, uh, dynamic array we can call it as. So, let us flip to visual studio right let me write the code for jagged uh, what it is dynamic array how to we change the array size at run time. Now, let us add class here a very simple class I am adding with dynamic array class, but meanwhile first I will take as usual I will display some single dimensional array technique dynamic array I am writing then you can see this I will go for single dimensional code only first of all you can see this static void main. Then let me create single dimensional array array name a equal to new int of array size is 6 and 6 elements I want to print 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Then you can see this after that console dot write line elements of array r elements of array r. Then I am going to take for each loop for each int i in a then open bracket close just and just displaying that what single dimensional array elements as usual if you know this code clearly console dot write and I plus some space in between element to element, but if I am going to uh, write that directly what is happening it is very simple single dimensional array already we talk about single dimensional array here I have taken array name is a and array size is how 6, 6 elements I declare here elements of array are 6 element as it is it will display now. So, solution explorer and double click on properties and expand startup object and select dynamic array to run then click on save and run it and as usual you will expect what 
six elements of single dimensional array it is displaying but so after that if I would like to change this array size at running time so that is purpose I am adding here one more statement you can see this then uh, enter enter new size of array enter new size of array so as a programmer you should enter new size of array that is integer type we will be enter at running time that will be stored in n variable then that integer time means what as usual we are going to read that what we are entering at running time that user will enter that new size of array that is called 2 or 3 or 5 or 6 or 20 or anything it can be entered that is integer value but as we know that when we are going to give any integer value or string value or any other values as input at runtime console application is treated as string so that's what you will be able to convert that string to integer we know that converting from string value to integer we have a conversion method dot convert dot to into 32 is there here let me convert it and now right now here after that you can see this when i'm going to run elements of array are 10 20 30 40 50 60 after that it is asking what enter new size of array you should enter the new size of array here for example 4 that 4 we enter that will be stored in where n variable so according to that new size which is entered by the programmer that n variable i would like to change the array size that will be effect after changing so let me show this how to we change that so you know that array size can be changed using what method resize method so that resize method is associated with what class array class here array is a class array is a class and resize is a method but if you want to change the array size so you should take the reference from original array name that is a the new size is available in where n variable right so because of this line of code only array can be changed array size can be changed it will be reflect so array is a class dot resize is a method of reference keyword i'm using because we should take reference from original array that is a comma n is can be affected here new size so after that changing this would you like to display array elements as it is let's copy this and paste into here so i want to display after resizing whether elements are affected or not i would like to see this so that's what i'm taking here again elements of array then after resize elements of array after resize are like this it will display for example you can see this let's run the application and check that i am going to give 12 size actual size is array is 6 elements only but i am entering 12 now let's run here it is showing elements of array after resize are 10 20 30 40 50 60 then there are three zeros are there empty values okay but not only like this you can see this when i'm going to enter some values here from two elements then two elements only are going to be printed here are you getting yes so we are changing array size dynamically clearly so we are changing clearly array size dynamically but how do we change you can see whether what we have given at runtime value that will become and stored in where n variable or not we will check out now by keeping breakpoint okay let's start then you can place cursor on n n is not there any value by because we till now we didn't enter any value press f11 now then you can see this it is asking enter new size of array for example new size of array is 15 i am entering then press enter now n is having what 15 value will be stored or not then after that here it is taking array is actually six elements but here n is having what 15 element that 15 will be replaced with what six now you can see this enter ln n is a 15 int 15 is there a of 15 so that means 15 size is going to be affected here then for each all elements will be read 15 times elements will be read by pressing f11 you can see this all elements will be read after that it will be display that values okay right so it is very simple to read the elements and everything here but what is the necessity to change the array size and dynamically that means dynamic array how it is possible why use dynamic array for example consider there are two array elements then a size is some 8 and b size is 12 if you do like to copy the a elements into b that easily we can copy by because a size is 8 and b size is 12 a 8 elements can be fit into 12 size of array but other than that if you'd like to copy that 12 elements into array as a 
8 size then it is not possible. So, that is what we have to increase that array a size 8 to some other changes that in that case we can use that dynamically we can change the array size ok. So, this is about the dynamic array and all ok right. So, in next session we will be discuss about array properties and array methods copy method sort method reverse method array classes having methods array objects are having method we will be talk about uh, array methods and everything in next session.